Welcome to day 17 of Crafty Advent. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video that was another one with annotations. Um, I thought today's one needed a voiceover because I'm using the GoPress and foil machine again. Um, and here I'm actually using it to letterpress. You can see the red light is on on the machine but it's not actually hot. Um, you don't need it hot for this process but I'm still using the GoPress platform just because it means you don't have to um, figure out uh, what sandwich to use in your die cutting machine and because I'm going to use it to hot foil in a second but basically I press my oxide ink pad onto my hot foil stamp um, onto the intricate side of it, sprayed it with water, added it to the platform, put the card on top and then ran it through and that's given us um, what we call a letterpress technique although it's a bit sort of a watercolory letterpress technique because I added the water um, and I added three 300 GSM shims which maybe was a little bit too much pressure because some of the bits um, of detail on that seahorse actually cut through but um, I add a piece of card behind that later to fill in the gaps and it looks really good so it was kind of like a happy accident right so now I have laid down a few more hot foil stamps these are um, exclusive to craft stash and I'm using some clear iridescent foil um, so I've placed those hot stamps down to get hot and now I'm taking off a piece of foil that's about the same size as my piece of card and then um, once my dies have warmed up enough I'm going to put the foil pretty side down it's kind of difficult to tell with the clear foil you might have to give it a little practice and then I've put just a piece of scrap printer paper over the top just to stop um, anything over foiling onto my top clear plate now I'm going to run this through the machine so I'm just using the basic sandwich you would use for any hot foil dies um, and I just run that through, peel it off and then we've got the clear foil which is basically giving us um, the same kind of thing as if we did um, a heat emboss resist technique or um, my new favourite thing is stamping with glue and then letting it dry and um, using that as a resist technique as well but it's the same kind of principle except we're just using clear foil um, so I've now moved some of my hot foil stamps around to different areas and I'm using the same piece of foil so I'm not wasting any foil. Um, and then I've made sure the sandwich was hot enough and then I'm running it back through again. Um, again I said in the last hot foil video that I was talking on, um, it kind of looks like I'm being really awkward and I can't run it through the machine very easily but it's because you want to run it through slowly. Um, so that you get a nice even pressure um, across all of the hot foil stamps so that the um, foiling transfers nicely so you want to do it nice and slowly um, and then I'm just finally looking at my card thinking I do want to add a few more so I reposition them again making sure bits of foil are actually covering those hot foil stamps and then I'm going to place the card on again um, and wait for that to get hot again um, I think there's a bit of quite a bit of pause time in this because I was saying in the last video um, that you kind of intuitively know how long to leave it for to get hot. Like, see, that says it's green, but I'm still leaving it because I was fiddling around with it for a little while and, you know, it's probably not as hot as it could be. I don't think it matters if it gets too hot because it's like a temperature-controlled platform, so it's not going to get above a certain temperature. Um, so better to be safe than sorry and just leave it a bit longer and then you're going to get the perfect results um, afterwards. So then I'm going to peel off that clear foil and save that because we can use any of those scraps for other projects at a later date as well. And I just use the tweezers that come with the um, uh, platform to remove the hot foil stamps and put them on that silicone mat that comes with it as well. Um, I'm currently using a mono sand eraser to uh, rub away any excess foiling. Um, you can usually tell when it's excess foiling because the bottom base plate has a grid pattern on it so you kind of get this sort of gritty pattern transferring um, but it's really not a problem, you just rub it away, you can just use a normal rubber as well, you don't have to have the sand rubber um, and anyway sometimes it adds to the effect and looks quite nice. So. Um, and then I just swiped across some Distress Ink. I was using Distress Ink in Faded Jeans and Distress Oxide in Broken China. And just swiping them across the surface 
um, spraying it with a bit of water and you instantly saw that clear foiling pop like because it just resists it because the foiling is a, like water resistant um, the ink is just going to completely bead up off of it and you can even use a bit of kitchen roll to dab up any excess that's on top of the foil but it instantly gives you that um, embossed resist kind of look except you're using hot foil stamps and foil rather than um, heat embossing so on the seahorse I'm just using some tonic um, glitter markers I've actually got them in front of me I was you oh it hasn't got the color on it my old ones don't have the colors on anyway it's the yellow and orange ones that came out in the original sets of them that were in sets of three they might have been in the same set actually the orange and the yellow and then I'm using a blue one there my blue one does have a name on it I think the blue one is called imperial blue um, and so I'm just adding a few dots to the background there as well now I'm using a sentiment, I think it says can't wait to see you um, I think there's one similar on my um, Seaside Cheer stamp set as well so I'll try and remember to link that below um, and I'm literally just stamping that in black ink onto a little strip of white card um, and that will just go across the card oh, I'm going to trim it down slightly felt like it was just covering up a little bit too much so just trim it down using your guillotine or scissors or whatever you prefer um, now I'm going to cut out the seahorse. You could easily have done her in hot foil as well. You could have um, hot foiled her in gold and then just watercoloured her in. But I thought um, showing you the letterpress technique um, would be nice. So she's pretty easy to trim around. I'm just using those tonic um, Tim Holtz mini snips just to cut around the edge of her, leaving a little white border as well. And then tuck the tail around the little sentiment strip. So this is what I was saying earlier. Because I'd used that those extra shims and made more pressure on the hot foil stamp, it kind of poked through those holes on her body. So um, I just used that orange um, glitter marker and scribbled it onto a piece of white card. And then I'm just going to stick that behind all those openings. And then I will just cut round it. You could have just left them open but I didn't want to be able to see the blue behind her because it would look a bit odd. You could even actually um, add in some like uh, Nouveau drops or gems to those areas as well to hide that if you wanted to. I'm just going to trim down the background. You could use um, a dye as well if you wanted to. Um, I just must have been in a mood where I wanted to cut it down with a paper trimmer rather than die cut it. And then just stick that onto the background. I like to add tape all the way around the four edges and then one diagonally across the middle. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of extra glue as well. Just to the corners really so they don't peel up. And then I'm adding the seahorse on with some 3D foam. Just making sure there's a little bit on all the different areas. But I also want to add um, a thread nest behind this. This is where you take like a metallic thread and coil some up and sort of put it uh, behind your focal element and then the adhesive from the focal element will sort of stick it down. I, I got in a right mess. Look how tangly that was. I think I managed to sort it out in the end. But um, yes, yeah, so you, you, you can get in a, a very big mess with that kind of thread. But if you sort of wrap it around your hand and get it into a sort of loopy... Um, pattern with no bits that are crossing over each other too much um, it works much better that way and then I'll just stick the seahorse over the top and the adhesive on the back of that will um, hold the thread nest in place I'm just going to add that sentiment strip and then I think the final touch was just adding on um, some Nouveau crystal drops Oh, look at that. I'd use pigment ink to stamp that with, then I pressed on it, and then pressed on the white card, and I transferred some of the ink. So using that sand eraser, or just a normal eraser, um, should take off um, that transfer of ink if you ever do that. And yes, yeah, so I'm just finishing off with some Nouveau, Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew. Um, I really love the Morning Dew ones. They're especially good for like raindrops on flowers, or like bubbles for under the sea scenes as well. 
So um, I hope you enjoyed today's card and enjoyed having a voiceover on this video because I'm sure I've had questions before asking me what I was doing at certain points in this video but um, I can never remember what I was doing in the video <laughs> so uh, I hope this helped those people um, and thank you for watching and I sh shall hopefully be back tomorrow with day 18 of the Crafty Advent series so see you then, bye! <laughs>